Hello, nomads. I'm Safia, the co-founder of Nomad Junkies. Have you ever dreamed of living across the world in the country where they film Lord of the Rings? Well, let's welcome Josh Henry, who will share with us his working holiday visa experience in New Zealand. Hi, Josh. Hello. Thanks for joining us today to share your experience of working and traveling in New Zealand, where there are apparently more sheep than people. Is that right? That's what they say. Um, and I think it's true, yeah. <laughs> well, if you have no clue and you're just watching in and you have no clue what a working holiday visa is, I'll put a link in the comment if you want to have more information about the cost, how to apply and the various requirements. But basically, it's a program from International Experience Canada, which allows Canadians 18 to 35 to work and travel in about 30 countries around the world. So I did it in Australia. And Josh, you're here today to talk to us about your experience in New Zealand. So what exactly drove you to apply to a working holiday visa in New Zealand? And we want to know the real story. Okay. Well, I, I started traveling at a quite a young age. I had a friend come on exchange to my hometown, Fort Francis, Ontario, when I was uh, in grade 10. And as soon as I graduated high school, I felt like uh, I had to go get out of my small town and see the world. So I went and actually did a working holiday uh, in Australia when I was 18. And from there, that basically kicked off uh, a massive obsession. So I came home and I studied and then I worked for a bit, but um, I just needed to continue like chasing that experience of, uh, you know, traveling and working outside of in, in these places. And the, the working holiday visa is such a cool opportunity to, you know, be able to go and instantly like get a job legally um, and you can get any type of job uh, that you can get real world experience and, and see another culture. So I was just obsessed with that. With that yeah, uh, so notion. You, you would say that the working all day visa really gave you the travel bug then. Yeah, actually, yeah, I guess it, it, it did. The, the first one really kicked it off. You know, I was able to make money and travel and uh, meet some great friends from around the world. So, that, you know, that's a that's a big thing. And then you went to New Zealand. And how long did you stay there? New Zealand, I was there for six months. Oh, wow. That's a great experience. And what are some of the first things you did when you moved to New Zealand? Because I think a lot of people might be a bit scared because you're going all the way across the world. So what do you do? What did you do when you first moved to New Zealand? Yeah, um, I, I did a bit of traveling before I went to New Zealand. Um, I was in... Hong Kong and I went to visit my cousin who was teaching English in Korea um, and then I actually went and met up with a friend in like the Caucasus region, Armenia, Georgia and then finally I went down to New Zealand and by that time I had spent a lot of the money that I had saved to kind of get to New Zealand so I went, uh, I searched online for a program that was I think called Help X or something where you can find work, um, you know, finding work online for um, hospitality jobs and that kind of thing is quite easy. And you can do exchanges where you volunteer your time and then you get accommodation and whatnot. So that was my go to uh, just to get settled. And then and then from there, I was able to find jobs and, and that. So. And what did you do in terms of accommodation? Uh, so I stayed at a really small, quaint uh bed breakfast hostel and I was doing the the, re the reception there um, and taking bookings and then it was in a really small town um, and yeah called Akaroa and uh, they had a cruise ship port so I was able to um, get a job there as a as a server and and then work for accommodation for for free so Oh, that's a great opportunity. And I know the one thing that scared me the most when I flew all the way across the world to Australia was um, a social circle. So how was I going to be making friends in a place that's completely new to me? So for yourself, how did this happen? How did you make friends there, especially when you know no one in that country? Yeah, it's always tough. Um, as, a, as a solo traveler, it's always a big, a big concern and going to a new destination. Um, but 
at these places like at hostels and um and and then there's other there's so many other people doing exactly that right so you get there um i was i was able to meet instantly a, a girl from france and a guy from argentina and we really hit it off and became good friends and then there was germans and um uh, swiss there and stuff so yeah it, like instantly you just connect with these people because everyone's you know on a similar path doing a similar experience and everyone's looking for friends so it's it's great like you just you know you connect with people right away and uh, i'm still in contact with these people I, i've gone to visit them in dubai and yeah it's, it's awesome 100 percent. i find that the solo part of traveling is that you're never alone like you think that you're going to be alone, but really you have to fight to put your headphones and read a book to have no one disturb you. But otherwise, it's so easy to meet friends, like you say, in hostels and those social settings. I wanted to know, since you did both a working holiday visa in Australia and one in New Zealand, what would you say are the main differences between li living in these two countries? Ah, uh, That's a good question. Uh, well, I think Australia's a lot more you know beachy and party vibes and uh so it's great it's great for that australia is um yeah it's a fun sunny hot country whereas new zealand was it was a lot uh i don't want to say like, like it was quieter but in a in a really good way and then there's so much adventure activities there you know like uh the the jet boating and um hiking volcanoes and uh skydiving and all those kind of cool things um and the scenery is just like bam in your face everywhere you go um and then people you know aussies are, are uh they're great but they're they're more in your face and, and kiwis i think are a little more maybe like us canadians you know just they don't need to be at the they don't need to you know talk 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 all the time so <laughs> I've heard from so many people that living in New Zealand is basically like living in a postcard. Would you say that's true? Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. Like, and I spent a lot of time in, in Western Canada, and then a lot of people said, you know, you're just going to go like the Southern Islands, like that. But it's it's so it's different, and it's just so incredible. Like, and the versatility of the of both islands, like with. The beaches and volcan volcanoes and um, mountains and glaciers and everything it's just like and, and there's uh, yeah it's it's just like you said living in a postcard and did you do any of the extreme sports like did you jump off the plane and go um, skydiving yeah i went um bungee jumping there i went skydiving there uh i did surfing i did some yeah i did the volcano hiking uh Yeah, I did. I did as much as I could possibly squeeze in while I was there. So you became an adrenaline junkie. <laughs> yeah, if, I mean, you, you don't have to do it, but if if you're if that's your thing, like I don't think there's many better places than New Zealand. Oh, that sounds awesome. Um, so I just want to know what steps did you take to find a job while you were there? Was it easy? And what kind of job can someone expect to get when they're doing a working holiday visa in New Zealand? Yeah, so when I went, it was 2014. And, uh, you know, finding a job online and those types of like help X and uh, work away and that were, were, were around. Um, so that was a great starting place to see what was available and to, to you know, look into to what options you could do. But the way that I got a serving job was... Um, Uh, just walks straight into a restaurant and said, like, are you hiring? And then these are small communities. So if they're not they're you know, they know that Roger down the street is, is looking for work at his place or whatever. So that's, you know, you can, you can just walk into these places. And then when I was in Queenstown, there's a, there's a big network of travelers and, and work holidayers. And so people are just talking amongst themselves and they they're at a job already and they're like you know what you can get i'm sure if i talk to my boss you could work here so it's it happens quite naturally like you might think you need to do it all online but um the old methods are are still alive and well the so word of mouth and talk to as many people as possible yeah and then on and then to say what type of work hospitality always comes to mind because these are you know there there's so much uh opportunity for you know short-term employment with that um but i think 
I think like now there's, you know, there's probably lots of jobs you could do with your a designer or, you know, if you, uh, you do some sort of like copy or, you know, I'm sure there's lots and lots of stuff that you could, if you have your laptop now, um, I, I don't, I recommend more of doing a, a, a social job because you get to immerse yourself with locals in that. Um, don't just yep. be stuck, stuck on your laptop, but, but I think there are more opportunities now uh, to do different types of work. So it's, it's really cool. And would you say that the money that you earn uh, during your working holiday visa was enough to cover your cost of living there? Yeah, absolutely. I was able to have, um, uh, yeah, comfortable, comfortable life. And I, I don't know if it's like hacking, but you know, you, when you work at a restaurant and then you're working at a, a place where you can sleep, you know, you can get your meals free while you're working, um, you know, you're sleeping for free, like my outside expenses, uh, and, and then activities, like there was a, there was a, a cruise, a cruise boat that like went for dolphin cruises, you know, you get all those activities free because you're in the, you're in the network of, um, these, yeah. So, uh, so I was, I was banking everything and getting, you know, essentially everything for free, which is kind of the hack that no one tells you about. Yeah, it's good to know. So where did, did you travel any place around New Zealand during your working holiday visa? And if so, what were your favorite places? Yeah, I did. I traveled uh, all up the most of the um, Southern Island, except for like the Franz Josef, so I didn't go over to the glacier side. And then I also did uh, all of pretty much all of the North Island. Uh, you know, to like pinpoint one place is so, so difficult. I think every place uh, was unique just in the, the types of memorable experiences and people that I met. That might, that might be a bit cliche, but, um, but yeah, it was just like I did a hitchhiking. Uh, I did lots of hitchhiking in New Zealand. And the people that I just met who like took me on these, you know, I had a very like free go with the flow itinerary. And, you know, letting that happen just really made some incredible, incredible, incredible experiences. So would you say that this trip to New Zealand changed your life? Yeah, it, it massively did. Um, it, it, it changed my life in the way that I was I was always working to to go on the next adventure. And I was um, so I was always chasing that like you know, where am I going to go next and, and banking back home to, to go on the next trip. And then when I got to New Zealand, I thought like that was kind of the, the, the it moment where I was like, why am I not in travel? You know, why am I not immersing myself in a, in a job that allows me to, to do this? So I actually got a job um, while I was in New Zealand as a tour guide. And then that kind of set me on the trajectory that I've been on for the last 10 years or coming on 10 years. <laughs> and so I feel like it's a good segue for my final question. Um, I want to know what advice would you give to someone who would like to do a working holiday visa but is hesitating? So what message would you like to share with them? Yeah, uh, you just got to go. Uh, there's just, it, if you're on the fence about it and you've been thinking about it, like it, it, you'll, you'll never, never, never uh, um Think that that was a the wrong the right choice to to or wrong choice not to go. Um, you have like you really really need to do it. it. There's there's so much learning uh, to be done from like other cultures, from uh, work experience, but then also from yourself and like what you're capable of. Uh, you know, getting yourself into a situation where you need to go and find work and you need to learn a new skill and you need to make friends and stuff like those are just invaluable lessons and uh and just something that i strongly recommend that everybody goes and does and i uh i mean new zealand i think is the place to do it so live life with no regrets and just do it absolutely <laughs> wow so thank you so much josh for joining us today and sharing your working holiday visa experience for those of you that are watching us live, it's now your turn to ask your question about the working holiday visa um, in the comments. So don't be shy, just write them down and we'll take two questions and have Josh answer them. So let me check. All right, someone is asking, I want to travel, but I don't have any experience outside of Canada. 
Which country is the best to start traveling alone, Australia or New Zealand? Oh, um, you know what? It's actually like a, a, a coin flip. Uh, I think what I said, what I was saying earlier, like if you're somebody who's maybe a little slower paced, likes scenery, um, wants to, yeah, outdoor, if you're an outdoorsy person, New Zealand all the way. Um, if you're more of like city life, uh, and you want party, 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 then, then Australia. Um, but really like, that's, that's so tough to say, like, they're both great. And, and regardless of which one you choose, you need to go to the other one, the other country while you're there, because it's only like a three hour flight. So, um, whatever one you choose, make sure to visit both. I hear you because when I was in Australia, I missed out on New Zealand and listening to your experience right now is giving me major FOMO and wanderlust to go to New Zealand when it's possible to finally travel there. Yeah. Um, so one last question. I'm guessing this is from a secret admirer, but uh, someone wants to know, where do you live now? <laughs> uh, well, currently I'm in uh, Phuket in Thailand. I moved to... Thailand about four years ago. I started, uh, it, like I was saying with my trajectory, I started a travel company with a friend um, where we do tours and we do like some sort of community uh, impact project where we help out a, a community with a local NGO. And that was, that was going really, really well. We've um, visited about 20 countries and done about 250,000 US dollars donation to projects all around the world. Um, so that was amazing. And then COVID kind of press, put a pause on that. So I moved from Bangkok down to Phuket and I've been building a, a travel app so that people can plan group trips in the meantime, an app called What's the Plan? So really excited to, to get that into the world and keep everyone traveling. Wow, that's really exciting and very inspiring. Um, if you have any questions, the people that are watching that we didn't answer, write them here in the comments and we'll make sure to reply to every one of you. And we'll also have someone from International Experience Canada who can answer any specific questions that you might have about the working holiday visa. So if you also decide to travel and work abroad after the pandemic, you'll find all the details on how to apply for every country, including New Zealand, on the International Experience Canada website. So check the links below in the comments. Oh, and one last thing, we'll be covering many other exciting destinations where you can apply for a working holiday visa in upcoming events such as Norway, South Korea, Czech Republic. So don't miss out on them. They're free. We'll share the links for the other events down below in the comments. So thanks everyone for joining us today and thanks uh, Josh for sharing your amazing working holiday visa experience in New Zealand. Yeah, thank you for having me. Go get it guys. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.